Good morning, Endeavor. Good morning, Houston. Another classic. Oh, yes, it's one of my personal favorites. I was there, Kyle. Good morning. Good morning. ユニットを回収した時に使いました。スペースシャトルのロボット。ロボットアームは、え、カナダ製のもので、肩に一つの関節、肘に一つ、そして手首の部分にも、え、関節、合計え、6個からなるロボットアームです。Endeavor. Hello, Brent and Brian. Endeavor for uh, the pilot team there. Can you see Australia at your front window? Yeah, we sure can. It's a uh, really nice view. We just went by Sharks Bay. Oh, uh, that's great. Endeavor, Tidris East. I'm clear, Tom. And Endeavor, Houston, for Brian, we're back on the flight deck with you.
Sally, how are the rest? Copy that. And I have a switch throw on A14.
Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, everyone out there in Houston. We're going to go live right now to the Space Shuttle Endeavor, where standing by is Dr. Dan Barry, who is a 42-year-old astronaut uh, on his very first mission, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning, Dr. Barry. If you would uh, answer these questions, uh, two spacewalks uh, in this mission are dedicated to testing tools and construction techniques for the future a space station, and we're wondering how far along NASA is in its readiness to build the International Space Station. Over. Yeah, we are doing uh, two space locks as uh, part of the uh, build-up toward the actual construction of the station. Uh, these space locks are integral to being ready to, to go because we are both testing the equipment that ultimately is going to be used to construct the station. We're testing the materials that are going to go into the station, and we're testing the techniques that we use, uh, that we will ultimately use to build that station. And then finally, we're training uh, people to go out and do those techniques in the space environment. Well, astronauts who become uh, construction workers for the space station will have to spend hundreds of hours out in temperatures that are 75 degrees below zero. How are the spacesuits doing in terms of uh, the gloves for keeping the hands warm and the boots for the feet? Well, I can give you some firsthand experience on that. I went outside yesterday for a little over six hours, and in fact, uh, my thermal comfort was excellent. I had uh, heated gloves with me, but it turned out that I didn't need to use them because I, I believe because of some of the improvements that we've made in the general cooling uh, system in the suit so that I was actually very comfortable uh, for the entire uh, time outdoors yesterday, as was uh, my crewmate, uh, Leroy Chow. Dr. Barry, if you'll stand by with us a moment longer, we'll say so long for the moment to our audience uh, here in Houston, and we'll be back a little later in this uh, morning news show uh, after 6.30 with some more from Dr. Dan Barry. So I'll pass it back to you in the studio. Okay, Dr. Barry, let's continue. Do you still hear me? Yes, I read you loud and clear. Okay, fine. Uh, you and your crewmates captured the Japanese uh, science satellite during this mission and just recaptured the science satellite, uh, uh, the OST, uh, that you released a few days ago. It, it almost seems that there isn't anything that the space shuttle can't do except maybe fly to the moon. Over. It's a, a re remarkable machine. I have to say that now that I've had the opportunity to, to ride on board, it is astonishing what this uh, spaceship is capable of doing. This particular mission is very full. As you mentioned, uh, we've uh, uh, retrieved Japanese satellite, deployed and retrieved another satellite, uh, done an EVA already, and we have another EVA coming up tomorrow. So uh, it's been a very exciting, very uh, full and fulfilling mission. On a personal level, you're a rook, and uh, you've had a, had, a, had a chance to do a spacewalk on your first mission, on your first flight. Are you having any fun yet? Over? <laughs> I haven't been able to, to wipe the smile off my face uh, since they said 3210. It is just simply fantastic. Um, I've been trying to, to think of words to describe the experience and, and the view from space, and... Uh, in terms of the view of the Earth, particularly during an EVA, um, the only way I can describe that is is as gemstone colors. The the blue of the ocean goes from um, from turquoise to midnight blue. The forests are emerald green. The, the clouds are so white that it hurts your eyes to look at them. It's really incredible. It is, I'm sure you're aware, 10 years ago this month that the shuttle Challenger was lost. Is there still an awareness in the astronaut office uh, in terms of not only the loss of colleagues, but also in terms of uh, continuing the quest? Yes, uh, I would say there definitely is. Of course, uh, the Challenger accident occurred before I arrived, and so I didn't personally know uh, any of the people on board. However, a number, a lot, most of the people in the office uh, were friends with, with the folks on the Challenger and uh, felt that loss uh, at a very personal level. So uh, you can uh, be assured that uh, their memory is very much alive uh, within the astronaut office. And the lessons learned from Challenger in terms of safety and uh, the things we need to do to, to fly safely uh, are still uh, very well in place. I can't hear Dan. 
Uh, Dan, I'm having trouble hearing you, but I'm sort of reading lips. Uh, are you still hearing me? Over. Yes, I'm reading you loud and clear. Okay, we'll go ahead with questions. I can't hear you. Uh, one of the questions that came up during the recent government shutdown is, uh, since there seems to be so much difficulty resolving budgets in Washington, how can an agency like NASA attract bright young minds, uh, the bright young minds it needs for the future? Uh, what do you think attracts you and others to the program despite the uncertainties of jobs and projects to work on? Over. I would have to say one of the great things about working at NASA are the people that are there and the reasons that those people are there. The people that, uh, that work in the space program aren't there uh, for the money and, and they're not there uh, for the recognition. They're, they're there because they are excited about the opportunity to explore new environments, to uh, push our frontier back, to be out uh, to where the future is going to lead, man lead mankind. I think that uh, the big selling point of NASA is that it's exciting to fly in space. It's exciting to, to think about where we're going uh, as a society. And uh, that's what continues to attract the very best people to NASA. Next month, former astronaut Bob Crippen is going to be awarded the Rotary National Space Award at a huge banquet in downtown Houston. Although he's been out of the office for some time, are there any Bob Crippenisms or Bob Crippen anecdotes that you can share with us that we can pass along to the uh, banquet goers here? Over. I think the guy. To, I think the guy to ask that question to is John Young. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, you're, according to your biography, you are from Massachusetts, and I was wondering if you had a chance to fly over the Northeast to look down on the snowpack. And what does that look like? Well, in fact, our orbit doesn't quite take us that far north. The farthest north that uh, we're going is uh, Cape, Cape Kennedy. However, uh, during a, a night pass recently, we were able to see the lights all the way from Miami to Boston. A truly incredible sight. We could actually identify uh, the various uh, coastal cities, including uh, the D.C. area, New York, and uh, Boston, from as far south as Miami. It was truly amazing. Take a second, if you will, please, uh, Dr. Barry, to describe tomorrow's spacewalk. Over. Yes, tomorrow, um, Leroy Chow and Winston Scott are going to go out to continue the, uh, the spacewalking experience we've been having on board. They are going to um, perform a spacewalk to do a number of tasks that are required for space station assembly. One of the uh, big tasks for Winston is, is really to determine what our thermal limits are. Uh, Leroy and I in the first spacewalk uh, were, were in a cold environment, but tomorrow they're going to be in a very cold environment, and we're going to have Winston uh, standing still so that his metabolic rate gets low, and we're really going to push the limits of the suit and uh, see how well it can perform to keep Winston comfortable. Um, Leroy and Winston are also going to uh, assemble some of the work platforms that are required for uh, putting together space station, as well as uh, check out some of the umbilical lines and connections that are uh, a key component in putting together the different modules that make up the entire station. Are you going to have Winston configured so that he at least has his face looking down toward Earth so he has something to look at during his uh, hibernation? Over. I don't think Winston would have agreed to do it if he couldn't look down on the Earth while he was standing still. Okay, Dr. Barry, I want to thank you very much for joining us this morning and continued good luck and success with this current mission. Houston KTRK, that concludes this event. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to say hi to everybody and to say thanks to the whole team that made it possible for us to be up here.